So welcome to On3. I'm here with Robin and we are in Meadow, Utah. And she's going to teach us about some wild, edible, medicinal type plants that grow in this area. So a brief introduction on yourself. Tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Robin. I am a certified family herbalist. Uh, most of what I concentrate on are herbs that are local to the area and then historical herbs. I like to concentrate a lot in the uh, 1500s, 1600s, when people were still living to about 150 years old. I have documentation of longevity during that time. I want to use the type of medicine that they were using. So we use what's local when we can, and then we're growing uh, the herbs that we can't grow, you know, get locally. Frequently what you'll find in the West are plants called wild lettuce. Wild lettuce you may find locally, but here's some we have over here. Wild lettuce, is, uh, you can find its distinction, is that they have this sort of um, Christmas tree look to it. The leaves, they're, they're spiny on the back, they're kind of prickly. Here we go here, they've got kind of a Christmas tree shape to them. And what this plant works the best on is painkiller. It does have opiates in it. And that's kind of a scary word for people these days. But what's happened with opiates as far as pharmaceuticals are concerned is that they have taken these, they've, they've made it 10 times stronger, they've had uh, addictive qualities in them that's not good at all. Where you take the original plant, it's gonna have a milky inside to it. So let me pop one of these for you without falling. Even within the center of that leaf, if you can see that there's a milk that's coming off of that, that is the important part of the leaf that's gonna help with painkillers. If you wanna have your own natural painkillers, some of the ways that you can do it, is you can take some of these plants and you just take your blender, you can put it into the blender and uh, add either water, if you want a, a weaker sort of painkiller, um, or you can add just a little bit of vodka. The vodka is gonna pull out the alkaloids and it's gonna help make it into more of a liquid. You can let that go, make up about that much, let it sit for a day or so, and then squeeze it through a cheesecloth, a cotton cloth, and then you've got your own homemade um, painkiller. Now it's going to be maybe a little bit weaker than if you take Oxycontin, but it does help to take the edge off and it's not going to be addictive. The thing about plants are, is that they have a life cycle, just like the human body has a life cycle. So the body is able to recognize it, it's able to assimilate it, and it's able to get rid of whatever it doesn't need. It's, it's one of the most natural things uh, that we have out there. And that's why it's written in the scriptures that we use plants. It's been given to us um, from the very beginning. So the, the wild lettuce is one of the best plants that can help you with pain. Other good benefits that work for uh, wild lettuce is that you can take it, you can steep it in a tea in hot water for a little bit, and it helps you to sleep. It helps for um, to to help anyone who's restless. Another thing that it helps with, if you have any kind of a fruit dryer, uh, if you've had a tragedy, someone has been uh, is very hysterical around you, and you're trying to cl uh, calm the setting of whatever's going on, you can get a fruit dryer. You can get this wild lettuce and you put it in there until the aroma is coming into the room and it'll help to calm everyone down. It also helps that it, once you walk out of that environment, you won't feel the effects of it anymore. It's not long lasting, but it does help in the moment. And then we also have equisetum, which is also known as dinosaur grass, which is also known as snake grass. Some people know it as horsetail. You can get this distinctive, a lot of them are by waterways. It's completely empty. You could use it as a straw here. You can see right through it. Um, they grow by waterways, um, also known as a horsetail, is what you can find most of the information on it. Um, horsetail works as a, really, really well if you're combining horsetail with plantain and yarrow. Put it together, make it into a tea. It's a great blood cleanser, um, especially if you've got anybody who's very sick, someone who's an addict, you know, those kind of things that can clean the blood out. And it's really, really good to help your uh, hair grow. Here we have wild alfalfa, which is one of the best things you can use for your animals or for people. If you've got someone that's really sick, you could take some of this alfalfa that we actually will keep in our garden area. It's got these beautiful purple flowers. You can see that the, the, the wild uh, form of alfalfa, incredibly valuable as long as you have these uh, that are non-GMO, but you, uh, it's, it's very healthy as far as nutrients. It adds nitrogen to the, to the soil. You can take this, you can hang it up upside down, let it dry out. You can grind it in a grinder and you can put it in capsules. And you can, uh, if you've got someone who's very sick, not eating very much, even if they have just a little bit of wild alfalfa, that'll keep anyone going. We love it. 
So Robin, I'm on a personal mission to learn as much as I can about the plant world, but as you know, it's, it's a, kind of overwhelming. Um, so I wonder if you have any tips for how people can kind of get started learning this stuff? Because like I said, it's, it, it, you could spend a lifetime learning about this stuff and still never even dent, never scratch the surface. So if you have any, idea, any ideas or any tips that can help us, that'd be great. First of all, um, identify what's around you. Look and see what you're seeing consistently grow. Anything that's considered a weed that is growing in your yard is really Mother Nature simply coming and giving you what you need for the moment. Start looking around you to see what's there. Then you can go into certain universities. Uh, they'll have a uh, weed population or they'll give information at, in each state or in the local areas to identify what these weeds are. Then once you see what the weed is, you're able to identify it medicinally. There's also books that are written out there that are say um, wild plants of the west or the south or the east. You can find these kind of books out there and just take your time Try to find, uh, to identify these plants. Um, you can, they've even got apps now on the computer where you can hold it right up to it. You always need to make sure that you absolutely have the plant that you're looking for. It's not just by the flower, it's not just by the seeds, and it's not just by the leaves. You can have a twin to each plant that looks identical to it. One is good and one is an evil plant, but they are distinguishable and you can get that information out there. For instance, there's a plant called Kenopodium. Um, you can have the, the sister plant to it that looks exactly like it. One's poisonous and one's not. But you can get help to understand that they'll help you to identify the differences in them. The Kenopodium plant has a waxy uh, stem on it where the poisonous can have more of a prickly stem. It'll help you turn the leaves over where you can see if it has an area of dots that can absorb moisture and keep it in it. The other one won't. And then the other thing that you can do is toss those plants to your chickens. Sometimes they know instinctively uh, if those are poisonous or not. Um, so there's a lot of variety of that, but there are a lot of resources out there, you know, to, to be able to identify those plants. I suggest you do it in your area around, around your own home first. Then once you go on treks and, and trips, you become more interested and the plants don't look the same anymore. You actually feel like you're in a, a magical wonderland. Awesome. All right. I really appreciate you taking the time and showing us some, uh, some of the plants around here. And we're really grateful for that. Thank you. I'm happy so, to be here. Like, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much.